الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك لك الحمد كله ولك الشكر كله على ما أنعمت وأوليت يا رب العالمين اللهم كما أنعمت فأدم وزدنا من نعمك واجعلنا من الشاكرين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أرسله رحمة للعالمين وهدى وبشرى للمحسنين فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فصل اللهم عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه واتبع سنته واقتفى أثره بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيقول ربنا سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير. Allah the Almighty says in His book, "Glorious is He who took His servants during the night from Al Masjid Al Haram, the sacred house in Mecca, to." Al Masjid Al Aqsa, the farthest mosque, which we have blessed its surroundings to show him of our signs. Verily, he is the all hearing, all seeing. Today is the 27th of. Rajab, give or take, with the differences which we have every year, and many people across the globe <coughs> think that this is the day of Al Isra journey and Al Miraj. The scholars of Hadith. <coughs> who are the authorities in Hadith, they went through all the narrations regarding the date of Al-Isra and Al-Mi'raj. To be honest with you, there's no authentic narration that it was in the 27th of Rajab. Not at all. On the contrary, we have around five narrations. One says it was in Rabi' al-Awwal. One says it was in Rabi' al-Akhir. One says it was in Dhul Qa'da. And one says in Raja, and so on. So we have different narrations. And as well, as they have differ on the date, they have differed as well on the year, which year was Al-Isra Al-Mi'raj. 18 months, the famous narration, we have more authenticity on that than the date itself, i.e. the day, which day and which month. The year almost, we have some more substance and so some more authenticity, 18 months, two years, one year in some narrations, 
just to let you know that from authentic point of view, <coughs> it's not on the 27th. But having said this, we need to talk about this event. If we are not going to talk about it in Rajab or in Rabia or in Dhul Qa'da or whatever, then we need to talk about this event. This very momentous event in his life, alayhi salatu wassalam. A bit of a background before we go through this. The Prophet وسلم, was rejected from people of Mecca, the denials, the disbelievers. They rejected his message alayhi salatu wassalam, throughout almost 13 years in Mecca. Guess what? How many people accepted Islam? 13 years. The scholars of Hadith, they said almost 113 people, not more than that. So he was struggling والسلام, to deliver his message. And he received plenty of rejections from the worshippers of idols. But he was persistent, he was وسلم, determined that he will deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the extent that they wanted to kill him, and you know the story, <coughs> when he was under siege for three years in Shab Abi Talib, for three years, Sallallahu and after that, his uncle Abu Talib passed away. His wife Khadija, after they left the siege, <coughs> His wife Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha passed away. As well, he went to At-Ta'if to deliver his message to the people of At-Ta'if. They have pelted him, they insulted him, and he was injured and humiliated, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With this very atmosphere, the scholars of Sirah call this year, this particular year, Aamul Huzn, the year of sorrow. Sadness. He was so sad to lose his uncle, who was his shield and protection against Quraysh. Lost his wife, the most beloved one to his heart, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And then he was insulted and humiliated from people of At-Ta'if. Then, as consolation from Allah Azza wa Jal, he made this very momentous event, Al-Isra wa Al-Mi'raj. In Bukhari, narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Kuntu fil Hijri. He was, you know, this Hijr of Ismail next to the Kaaba. He was there, alayhi salatu wa salam. Then, فَأَتَانِي آتٍ Somebody came to me and he means an angel. And then they have opened my chest. They took my heart out. They filled it with Iman. They put it back and then they took me through this journey. So before he went <coughs> to Bayt al-Maqdis, Hadith to Shaq al-Sadr happened. And this is not the first time. When he was very young, it happened to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was in the custody or under the care of his nurse, Halima. At that time, as well, the angel came to the Prophet وسلم, opened his chest and purified his heart And the scholars of Hadith and Sirah, they said this event, i.e. the opening of the chest, happened three or four times in the authentic narration. 
And this, all of it was preparation for that very journey to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the very first journey was from Mecca to Bayt al-Maqdis, which the Quran mentioned. But the journey to the seven heavens is not mentioned clear in the Quran. It's in the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Surah Al-Isra, it talks about the night journey from Mecca to Bayt al-Maqdis. Surah Al-Isra is not talking about Mi'raj, ascension to the heavens. It's not talking about this. So in that journey, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi went from Bayt al-Haram, Mecca, to Bayt al-Maqdis. And as well, I won't go through the whole story, it's a long story, but I'll just be posing on two or three scenes from that journey. He prayed as an Imam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with all the Prophets in Bayt al-Maqdis Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he used in that journey as he stated in Bukhari mentioned and others, the vehicle which he used it was Al-Buraq. Special vehicle, special dabba. It's between the horse and the mule. Between the two. And it's like the speed of light. So he used that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his journey from Mecca to Bayt al maqdis which Allah mentioned that it is a blessed place and the surroundings of that place is blessed. Then he went from Bayt al-Maqdis on al-Buraq to the seven heavens. As well in Bukhari, he met in the first heaven or the first sky, Adam alayhi salam. In the second, he met Isa and Yahya, وَهُمَ بْنَا خَالَ Relatives. In the third, he met Yusuf alayhi salam. In the fourth, he met Idris. In the fifth, he met Harun. In the sixth, he met Musa alayhi salam. In the seventh, he met Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the five times prayers. Of course it wasn't five first, it was fifty and then <coughs> he went back and forth between Musa and Allah azza wa jal until it's been reduced from fifty to five and then Allah said it's five the reward of fifty. And then he came back and it was still night. It was very quick, although there are many other scenes. I won't go through it for the limited time which we have. What he has seen through the seven heavens and other things. But the most important thing here from that Baytul Maqdis, which Allah has mentioned, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second thing, Salah. Had it not been yet an obligation on the Ummah, there are other narrations, Muslim Imam Ahmad and others, that since the Prophet received the revelation, Jibreel taught him how to pray. But the obligation of the five times prayers was two years before Hijrah or 18 months before Hijrah. So it's always been the case that the relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal is, it was through Salah. So the importance of Salah, the second thing. The status of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he led the prayer with all the Prophets Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he went to a place no one ever visited. 
سدرة المنتهى صلى الله عليه وسلم. So today, as last week, as the week before, we have marches of return in Palestine. People of Palestine are marching towards their land. In 1948, the United Nations General Assembly decided on the resolution 194 that the Palestinian people have the right to return to their land peacefully, anytime convenient for them. But since that time till today, never happened. Instead, massacres after massacres, biting into their land day after day. Gaza has been under siege since 2006. They decided to put it under siege because democracy has delivered something which they do not like. Regardless if you are with or against, but it's a matter of principle. Just to give you a bit of statistics, Gaza is 45 kilometers. <coughs> Two million people <coughs> living in Gaza under siege since 2006. What are we doing? What is the international community doing? The Arab League, the Muslim League, you name it. Watching. Best thing they can do, or they, they have done actually, condemnation, if it happened even. So our right, our first Qibla was Baytul Maqdis. Mi'raj al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was from Bayt al-Maqdis. We need to teach our children that this is our land. This is the sacred land which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made his journey to the to heavens from that very place. The last verse in Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يا أيها الذين آمنوا اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون Oh you who believe be patient and compete in patience and fear Allah that you may achieve فلاح success protect your frontiers رابطوا so he mentioned how can we achieve success, the formula for success in this situation. First, first thing is sabr. The second thing is to compete with your enemies who's practicing sabr against you as well. And the third thing is to protect your frontiers, ribat, which is what's happening now in Palestine. People of Palestine are protecting their frontiers, are doing revolt. So if we are doing so, then we will achieve success. But we need the support. And it's not a surprise when you read in the hadith that Imam al-Tabarani and Imam Ahmad and others narrated the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي على الحق الظاهرين لا يضرهم من خذلهم أو خالفهم حتى يأتي أمر الله وهم على ذلك. A group of my ummah will stay withholding to the truth. They will never be harmed despite those who let them down and those who disagree with them until the command of Allah arrive and they are as such. When I read this hadith many times, it never crossed my mind 
that the Ummah will let down the people of Palestine. But the Prophet is saying so, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La yadurruhum man khazalahum. They are letting them down by being silent, doing no support to them. Wala man khalafahum. And neither those who are in disagreement with them on political issues, on other issues. It doesn't matter. What we have, Bayt al-Maqdis, is the point of agreement rather than disagreement. So we should do our best to support people of Bayt al-Maqdis, people of Palestine, those who have been evacuated from their land, persecuted, under siege, massacred, International community is doing nothing but <coughs> watching and asking everybody to calm down, to keep their control. How long they should wait until they are massacred, all of them? So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us Amen. to support the truth wherever it is, to be truthful and to deliver the message of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli adha astaghfirullah alayhi wa la tufa fuzha mustaghfirin. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyu al-Mustafa wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man bi'ahdihi wafa. I've been asked this morning some of our students, he said, I was praying Isha yesterday in a particular mosque and then the Imam said, tomorrow it's the 27th, it's the event of Al-Isra Al-Mi'raj, so you have to fast tomorrow. It's a sunnah and you, all of you fast tomorrow. So he asked me, is it true? I said with my respect, he's wrong. There's no such a thing. Prophet ﷺ never fasted the 27th because it's Isra wal Mi'raj date. Never done this. Never recommended this to the companions. There's no authenticity on this at all. So be careful not to just go with the flow if somebody is just delivering a message to you. Double check the authenticity and the validity of this message. So there is no particular ibadah which been appointed to this particular day. No such a thing. So be careful, we don't want to invent or do any anything which is outside the parameters of the Sharia. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us always to stick to the Quran and the Sunnah to be amongst those who are withholding to the truth despite this agreement and despite all of the challenges which we have. Allahumma ya Rabbu ya Rahman. Ya Badi Asamawati wal Ab. Ya Dal Jalai wal Ikram. Allahumma inna nasaluka and to farija an ikhwaina fi filastin. Allahumma farij an baiti al Makdis. Wakna fi baiti al Makdis. Allahumma farij an ikhwaina fi sham. Allahumma farij an ikhwaina fi bilad al sham. اللهم فرج عنهم يا رب العالمين فرج عن المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها فرج عن اليمن يا الله وفرج عن ليبيا وفرج عن إخوائنا في العراق وفرج عن إخوائنا في كشمير وفي الصومال وفي أفغانستان وحيث ما كان قهر وظلم فرج الكربات يا رب العالمين اللهم ردنا إليك ردا جميلا اللهم أعد لهذه الأمة عزتها وكرامتها بالرجوع إلى كتابك وسنة نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اغفر لنا ما قدمنا وما أخرنا وما أسرنا وما أعلنا وما أنت على به منا مولانا رب العالمين
أجب دعانا بكرمك يا من لنا والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعينكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون اقتربوا للأمام وأفسحوا لإخوانكم Please come forward and make space for your brothers